Hey, this is Jeremy from Shine Insurance and the New Home Buyer's Guide. I'm sitting here with John Bethel of John Bethel Title Company. John, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jeremy. I'm glad to be here. Great. Okay, let's start with step one. What do we need to do first? Well, I think the first thing uh, a buyer ought to do is several days before the closing, uh, get with their advisor, whether it's a realtor or attorney, and review the title insurance commitment that's been issued. The title insurance commitment is going to show who owns the property and what that ownership is subject to. Mm -hmm. Some of those matters uh, will be taken care of at closing, but other, other matters like utility easements, building and use restrictions, uh, real estate taxes uh, going forward, uh, those are all things that the buyer will be responsible for and mm -hmm. have to live with as well. So mm -hmm. uh, the buyer ought to really understand what those things are and make sure they're compatible with their intended use of the property. Okay, so that's getting together with probably most usually your realtor, Correct. but sometimes a lawyer sure. in certain cases, sure. and really looking at the state of the land and the property itself right. as far as the legalities of where it's Correct. at right now. Correct. And maybe if there's easements so that the, um, right. the city can run lines through mm -hmm. it or things like that. Yeah, an easy way to think about it is most uh, buyers will have their property physically inspected mm -hmm. to look for defects. Of course, yeah. Uh, the title insurance commitment is like a legal inspection of okay. the property and looks for the condition of the legal nature of the title. Okay. What would be some common problems one would find with the legal nature of the title? I, I don't know if they're necessarily problems, but uh, the, commonly the seller will have obligations that have to be satisfied at closing, mm -hmm. most commonly their first mortgage. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have uh, other liens that have to be taken care of, or uh, if the seller is not an individual, but a, but a corporation or a trust, there may be mm -hmm. questions of who has authority to con convey mm -hmm. the property. And then there will also be rights uh, that have been given up in the property in the form of easements, uh, building and use restrictions mm -hmm. uh, that the buyer just needs to be familiar with. And there are separate and apart from zoning issues. So the buyer just needs to understand. It's a good idea to understand where those easement rights lie. If you're thinking of putting a big pool in your backyard right, and you find yeah. out there's a 40 foot natural gas line easement that runs mm -hmm. right underneath that, yeah. that's probably not going to work. And so that's one maybe the, one of the biggest things things just for your everyday life is if you have plans to change the scope of the home, a big porch, a pool, something like that, you want to make sure that you actually can do that and you'll be able to do that after That's the purchase. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. All right. So step one is really checking out mm -hmm. kind of a legal inspection yeah. of the property. I like that. Yeah. Um, what's step two? Well, the next thing I always try to advise people to is to make time in your schedule to actually be at your closing. Uh -huh. okay. uh, in today's world, you know, we're all busy and we all got 17 places to be at the same time. But uh, for most people, the closing is one of the most important things they're going to ever do. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of literally hundreds of details and to be there in person, to be able to ask somebody face to face and have some recognition that your question is being understood and that you're understanding the answer, there's really no substitute for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there, are, there are ways you can participate in your closing without actually being there, but in terms of really understanding what's going on, there's mm -hmm. no substitute for being present. Well, and certainly if you're a first time or second time home buyer, even more important probably to be present through this process Correct. than someone who's done this 10 times. Correct. I've, I've bought a home in the room that we're sitting in right now, mm -hmm. and I was present, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that's great. Okay, so making time in your schedule yeah. for the closing and making sure you're right. going to be present. That's step okay. two. What's step three? Well, uh, one of the things that the title company will prepare for you is a settlement statement that is, is basically a list of all the credits and charges uh, mm -hmm. that are necessary to complete the transaction. And one of the most important things is how the real estate taxes are handled. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really important that you understand how the real estate taxes are being handled at, at your closing. Uh, the seller's obligation uh, to pay taxes is usually completed at closing and they mm -hmm. have no further obligation after mm -hmm. then. Uh, the taxes can be handled uh, any one of about a half a dozen different ways. Right. And uh, other factors are the timing of when payments are made or when they're due, mm -hmm. uh, what the lender's requirements are. Mm -hmm. Typically, uh, within uh, 60 days of the due date of the taxes, the lender is going to want all the, the, those taxes to be paid. 
-hmm. However, uh, in the spring, uh, the tax amounts generally aren't known until like 30 days before they're due. Right. So there's lots of different ways that they can be handled, prorated, and escrowed. And uh, it's important to understand exactly how it's being handled in your transaction. And the reason that's important f just for the surface is that that's going to be potentially dollars out of you as the buyer's pocket at closing. Or, or after closing. That. Okay. Uh, there could be taxes that are, are due sometime after closing mm -hmm. that the buyer will just get a credit for. Mm -hmm. And then the buyer is responsible for them. So okay. you just need to know all those things mm -hmm. and who, the, the, who's paying the taxes and where that money is coming from. So that if you get a $1,200 bill from the city that you live in mm -hmm. a month after you close on the house, you're expecting it rather than not right. expecting it and not understanding it and being confused by That's it. That's correct. Okay. Anything else about the third step, understanding the charges and credits in the closing statement? No, uh, I, I think uh, just be cl clear with it. It's generally pretty straightforward. So that was step three, making sure you understand mm -hmm. all the credits and debits, yeah. debits associated with the closing. Right. What's step four? Well, just make sure that uh, your interest rate uh, in your promissory note that from your mortgage lender is what you agreed to, that mm -hmm. you, the terms as they're disclosed to you is what you understood them to be. That, prior to uh, 2008, that was much more of an issue than it's been since then with mm -hmm. the new regulations that have right. gone into effect. So uh, never hurts to double check. Things mm -hmm. do get lost uh, or misinterpreted uh, in the mm -hmm. process occasionally. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, uh, you know, we're all working on hundreds and hundreds of transactions with thousands right. of details. So. Right. So making sure the details for you, you are, what are you correct expected. is an important part of the process. I think when you're dealing with anything financial, that's the case. That's and correct. certainly with one of the biggest financial decisions you're going to make in your life. Right. right. Okay. Right. Uh, so step four was just making sure that everything is what it was presented to you as mm -hmm. uh, by your mortgage lender. Okay. Right. And, and what's step five? Well, always uh, look at the seller's deed to you and, and review the, how the names, are, your names are on the deed mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to make sure they're spelled correctly or, or match your uh, legal name. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully that's been identified prior to uh, when you actually get to the closing. You also want to know that uh, how you, if you're b buying the property with another individual, that how you're holding title is, is the way that uh, you want to hold title. So like a married couple would be just together? Together, uh, which gives them certain rights. Uh -huh. uh, unmarried couples could hold as joint tenants mm -hmm. with rights of survivorship, or you could just hold it uh, as tenants in common. And, it, okay. and those are legal uh, decisions that uh, are probably best addressed to an estate attorney if you've got any, mm -hmm. any questions. Most married couples uh, will hold title as uh, husband and wife, tenants of the entireties, mm -hmm. which gives uh, spouses, uh, each spouse, some protection against credit issues against mm -hmm. only the other spouse. Okay. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So just making sure the seller's deed is set up properly, not Correct. only just like your names are right and right. all that kind of stuff, but that it's set mm -hmm. up properly for how the buyers, whether that's a husband, wife type of spousal mm -hmm. situation or some other kind of buying together situation, Correct. that that is set up properly. Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, finally, step six, what's the last one? Well, probably the most important document financially other than your mortgage at your closing is it's part of the uh, state sales disclosure form uh, where you indicate whether or not the property is going to be your homestead, meaning that you're going to live in it. When you complete the sales disclosure, you can apply for your homestead uh, as part of that process, and that gets reflected when the deed is recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still very important a few weeks after your closing, though, to check with the county auditor to make sure that homestead was properly applied. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's so important is because of the way real estate pro property is taxed in Indiana. Mm -hmm. If it's taxed as homestead, taxes for homestead property are going to be about half right. of what they are for residential non-homestead. When the homestead is applied for, the uh, auditor, county auditor will provide a receipt uh -huh. form. Mm -hmm. And uh, that'll typically be returned to the buyer with their original deed. Mm -hmm. That receipt form is probably the most important single sheet of paper that they will get. Huh. 
uh, because if there's an error made, the only way that it can be retroactively corrected is with that receipt. And from time to time, mistakes are made. There's just so many transactions. It's not reasonable to expect them all to be handled perfectly. Yeah. So making sure you have that receipt is just really, really important. So when, when we file with the auditor in different states, it's going to be different. You know, this is just for Indiana. Yeah. But we certainly want to make sure in, in Indiana, the example is if you live in the home that you just purchased, if it is mm-hmm. your homestead, right. your property taxes are much less. Correct. And so that filing of the homestead exemption is incredibly important mm-hmm. because it's going to cut your property taxes right. in half. Right. And probably most states have some similar kind of laws but understanding what your state state mm-hmm. laws are and what you have to do because that requires going into the assessor's mm-hmm. office and making sure you file a certain form, right. and making sure you get that receipt and hold on to that receipt right. in case anything goes wrong. So that's really kind of the last step in your mind yep. of, of making yep. sure that you have a successful home closing yep. is getting all the things with the auditor's office right so it will reflect on your taxes. That's correct. Okay, did we leave anything out? I don't think so. If you do all those things, you'll have a great experience. Cool. Um, Well, John, thank you so much for taking a few moments to share this with us. I hope that folks that listen to this video Mm -hmm. have a much better home closing. And just don't feel fear, but feel excitement. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? It's uh, a tremendously exciting time, kind of the end of a long journey for a lot of people, particularly first-time home buyers. And uh, it's just really great for me for 40 some years to be able to have an impact on that that part of people's lives. Absolutely. So if someone wants to find uh, John Bethel Title Company, how can they do so? Uh, They can go to the web, johnbtitle.com, check out our website. Uh, We're at 329 South Walnut in uh, Bloomington Mm -hmm. and uh, would hope to see you soon. (laughs) Okay. All right, John, thank you so much. All right, thank you. If you enjoyed this video and you feel like you want to learn more about the new home buying process, we've got the perfect resource for you. The New Home Buyer's Guide is a nine-step course that walks you through the entire home buying process. We'll talk credit, realtors, finding your home, and so much more. The course includes a workbook to organize the process and a closed Facebook group to see how other buyers are dealing with the same bumps, the same bruises, and the same celebrations that you are. Check it out at newhomebuyersguide.net. And finally, there are two things you need to do right now. The first is to subscribe to our channel. We love to put out great information about home buying, insurance, and other financial stuff. The second, if you feel like great things are happening at this channel, please do share on your social networks. Good information is only great when it's shared. Until the next time, have a wonderful day.